guys, it's been a long time since I uploaded a video. Um, my life has been kind of crazy, a lot of things have happened. Um, well, I moved out of New York, uh, now I'm living in Denver, and this is my new studio. Moving from one city to another means a lot of things that you need to solve in the way to make your life kind of work again. So it took me some time, but here I am again. And today I want to share something very specific with you guys that I think may be useful um, if you work with paint, with any kind of paint. I do it for oil paint um, and I've seen a lot of benefits in my practice from it, but I think even if you are using watercolors or wash, I think that you may find this useful, so I want to share it with you. One of the things that are most important when you're a painter is to pick your pigments in the right way. Pigments uh, have different properties and they behave differently um, according to their physical composition. I don't want to get too much in detail into that, but the thing that it's important to keep in mind is that all these paints that we work with are physical objects, you know, are products that are made, most of them in industries, but some of them are made uh, by hand. But this process of preparation um, change from one company to another. So there could be uh, very subtle differences, but when we are working with color, every subtle difference is very important. So what I've done uh, as one of my methods to work with my paints in the right way is to have these charts that you can see over here. The useful thing about having this is that I am very clear at every moment of what pigments do I have available for my work? The thing is that we are used to have tons of uh, paint tubes and sometimes they're in a box, sometimes they're all over the place in the studio. And when you're working and you're mixing the colors in your palette and you are trying to figure out how to build the right relationships for your painting, uh, you don't have time to go one by one or at least I don't have the memory to remember every subtle difference in all the blues that I have or all the reds that I have. So to have these charts available for myself it's been very useful because I can go to them while I'm working and look at my pigments and realize what's the right pigment that I should use for my mixture or for, I don't know, a new color that I'm gonna introduce in the painting. So. As I told you, in the case of oil paint, um, there are different properties to consider and that's why I designed this chart for my advantage. Of course, you could like include more elements on it or less, depending on what you think is useful for you, but at least these have been working very well for me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain to you first uh, how I organized it and then I'm going to show you how I made it. So what I did is I organized my colors by hues, um, more or less, because there's always certain pigments that are kind of in between, but I organized them in hues, the greens, uh, the reds and magentas, yellows, uh, cyan and blue, and my black and air tones. So uh, for example here, I have my greens and the thing that I did is that I included a more transparent version of the pigment. I thin it out with uh, some thinner or medium, then applied a uh, very thick uh -huh, right next to it, and then I mixed it with titanium white. The useful thing about mixing it is that um, all whites have different temperatures or different colors in them, so a lot of times when you mix your pigment with white, the color can change a little bit. So it's good to have that in consideration. I could even like mix it with different kind of whites to see how that changed the, the hue. Um, this allows me to see how different pigments behave when they're thin and they're thick. For example, uh, some of the pigments are more transparent like phthalo green. So when I apply it very thick, it's very very dark because like these particles are like overlapping so it gets very very dark but at the same time it's very hard to make it a very even like finishing but in uh, chromium oxide green it's a difference because 
the, the thick layer is very flat because it's a much more opaque kind of paint. Um, what I did too that it's been useful for me and a lot of times is uh, very important to have in consideration, I wrote the name of the paint but also the number of the pigment or pigments that are in the composition of the paint because names change from company to company sometimes but the important thing is what's the pigment that it's in the paint. I also wrote down the brand so I can have uh, more specific information about that paint because some companies have different way of preparing the same color and so there could be variations from one brand to another so it's very important to have that in mind. Um, so, well, I'll show you how I did it and hopefully this is going to be a good tutorial for you guys to do it. You're going to need some paper uh, to paint with oil paint, a brush number four, some linseed oil, some thinner, your regular palette or a paper palette, your pencil and a knife, and of course all your oil paints. So this one is... Um, 12 by 16 inches and I would cut them in three different parts so I would have like this smaller charts that I could actually carry around with me. paper. I can have more according to the more oil paints that I have uh, but the important thing to do right now is to organize your paints because probably you have tons of them and they may be like all mixed up so what I would do is organize all my oil paints according to color. Once you have everything ready, you start, for example, with your reds and magentas. And you don't need a lot of paint, just a little bit, it's enough. The first sample, it's going to be very, very transparent. So I'm going to dip my brush in the linseed oil or any medium you have and mix it with my paint. second sample it's going to be very very thick so I'm going to make sure to put a lot of paint in my brush. And for the last one I'm going to mix it with titanium white. I'm going to make sure that it's mostly white and a little bit of the other pigment. that this is done, I'm going to write down the information of this specific paint. All that you need is on the tube itself. So, in this case, I'm going to start with the name, that it's Persian Rose. The numbers for the pigments are usually on the back. And to finish, I'll include the name of the company. In this case, it's Williamsburg. Once that's done, you can continue with the rest of your paints. 
so of course this is just the beginning you're gonna end up uh, filling in everything with all your old paints uh, the thing that I do is that every time that I get a new paint I include it in my charts otherwise I start losing track of what I have what I don't have um, and I really hope that it's useful for you guys if you do it please like send me pictures share them in the comments below um, and let me know if it's helpful for you it's been a huge help for me I want to make more maybe mixing with other kind of whites um, maybe trying in different grounds uh, but uh, I think that this is great material uh, because you guys, if you paint, you know that when we're in the process of painting, there's so many decisions to make that if we can make it easy by having things at hand, I really think that it's worth doing it. So, bye and I'll see you soon.